Spanish-American War, this may have been Theodore Roosevelt's theme song. But at the turn of the 20th century, many Americans preferred isolationism. However, as international trade, transportation, and communication became easier and more frequent, we soon found ourselves immersed in world affairs. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about how the U.S. becomes a world power. And the information from this presentation can be found in Chapter 14 of your Orange Book, Sections 3 and 4, on pages 467 through 483. Our goals for this presentation are, of course, in Goal 6, Objective 1, examine why the U.S. took an active role in world affairs. Objective 2, identify United States military, economic, and political involvement in world affairs. And Objective 3, describe the impact of U.S. policies on other countries. Our essential questions are, why did the United States become involved in world affairs? How did the government's role in economic and political affairs change as America became more imperialistic? And what areas did the U.S. try to influence through military, economic, and political means? In the previous presentation, we learned about the expansion of the United States through the purchase of Alaska in 1867. This was known as Seward's Folly because a lot of people felt it was a really silly investment, a bad purchase. Um, but as we know, it turned out to be a good purchase because of Alaska's valuable resources. Also, in 1898, we acquired or annexed Hawaii. Under President Harrison, American planters organized the overthrow of the monarchy of Quil Queen Liliuokalani in 1893. However, Harrison could not get Congress to approve the annex. And actually, the next president, Cleveland, apologized to Hawaii for overthrowing it, declaring the act reprehensible. But finally, because um, people in the United States favored expansion and because we had so many uh, trade ties with Hawaii, McKinley annexed Hawaii in 1898. In the next video, we'll discuss U.S. intervention in Latin America.